Today we are boarding the most iconic river ship in Australia, the PS Emilu. For the next four days, we're gonna be cruising down the very windy Murray River as we experience the elegance of the boat. It's just so much lighter than you think it's gonna be. As well as the awesome history of the region. In this video, we will share with you a tour of our room, welcome in, show the amazing food on board, and even hop off for an excursion or two. So join us as we discover what it's like living on the last surviving wood fire paddle steam. We've been on board for two hours maybe, had a nice safety briefing, a nice afternoon snack and drink with everybody. Oh, there's lots of flies. <laughs> and I am so excited for the next four days. I think the food's gonna be amazing. The people are amazing. I'm so excited for the off board excursions tonight, especially. a quick tour of the room we're staying in before we're here for too long and mess it up. <laughs> Welcome in! There really isn't that much to show but there are a few details and additions in here that make the space very well utilised. We are in room 3 on the PS MLU which I believe is a queen configuration. I think there is also twin and doubles on board but I'm not 100% sure. Because there isn't much space what they've done very cleverly is left the entirety basically of under the bed free so we have shoved all of our things <laughs> under there. There is a super powerful air conditioning unit which is perfect for this hot day and the door has like a little window guide so you can look out through here as well and get some natural light in. Behind me we have a desk that is chock a block with useful things like bug spray, extra toilet paper or tissues. Other than that it's just your standard things like outlets, mirrors and some water. It is very tastefully done though. I feel like it's quite luxurious without being overstated. We also have a very spacious bathroom. I don't know if you can hear me. We have some fancy toilet that kind of scares me as well as a huge shower with a rainwater head. Apparently the water through our bathroom is fed from the Murray so it is safe for us to wash in and brush our teeth but not recommended for us to drink because I don't want to get sick. Only one thing left to do. I better take my shoes off. Ooh. Looks good. That's nice. Oh yeah baby. This is so cozy. Oh, it does feel quite good on my back too. Yeah, it's really soft and cushy, but not like uncomfortably so. Yeah, you've done well, Emmy Lou. That sounds weird because <laughs> I'm Emmy. <laughs> good job, Emmy, on the Emmy Lou. Now you gotta freshen up, and then it's dinner time. <laughs> the rains are here. It's bucketing down. I really didn't expect this. I also didn't pack for this weather. I have a very light cardigan. It was 36 yesterday. Yeah. It was. In Melbourne. Melbourne does change a lot, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. City of Four Seasons. Four seasons. Mm -hmm. Apologies, we haven't got the game way out. But would anybody really want to be going walking in the mud at the moment? No. no. So as you would have noticed here, because the rain's been fairly consistent, there's a lot of mud on the decks already, so it's pretty muddy out there, unfortunately. Um, so apologies for that. Tomorrow morning, 8.30, we'll depart, and we'll be chuffing upstream to Paracuta Station. That's the end of night one. We were originally supposed to go on land and have like a campfire and a sing-along, but the rains made it super muddy, so I think we're all gonna kind of head in for the night and tomorrow's another day.
Good morning from day two on the Emmy Lou. I slept so well. It was quiet and it was dark. Last night we had an amazing roast dinner and a huge dessert. Like the portions on board are mammoth. It was, someone called it like five star food. Completely agree. We were also the first of our group <laughs> to go to bed. So lots to look forward to today. You might be wondering, because I don't think we've mentioned where we're going on the Emmy Lou. <laughs> we drove to the start point and it takes 35 minutes to then take four days on the river back. It's a very windy river and there's lots of stops. But we're also going out to like today, we're going out to a winery as well. It is a full day today, which I'm so excited for. Yeah. Should we go have second coffee? Yeah. No one else is joining us out the front this morning because it is freezing. I didn't bring a jumper, so I have to borrow Jordan's. It means he's cold, but I'm warm. <laughs> and we're off for day two. I think it's only an hour and a half or so down the river until we get to a winery. The sun glistening off the rippled surface of the river. So many shafts of gold. As you've probably noticed, we have cast off. We are chucking merrily and jauntily upstream bound for Paracuda Station. We should be there sometime between 10.30 and 11. But anyway, that's enough for me at the moment. So sit back, relax and enjoy the lovely scenery. We learnt yesterday this whole region of the Murray was kind of like the mining boom before the mining boom happened, but it was sheep. There was heaps of money to be made and this river and all the surrounding tributaries were kind of like the highways, but instead of cars it was all paddle steamers. Eventually they invented railways and actual automobiles and the paddle steamer situation got a lot less, but I'm so glad that things like this still exist for tourists like us, even though we're from here. Oh, it's freezing. Oh yeah. so nice being tourists in our own country again. I just love this so much and it feels so Australian. The sun makes it look like it's warm, but the wind <laughs> is brisk. It's killing us. It's meant to be up to like 30 today though. Not right now. Apparently the company has a new ship coming out sometime soon, which is meant to be five star. But I can't imagine having anything other than this because it's like got this rustic Australian casual charm to it. I don't know, five star would be nice, but this is just something special. So on our starboard or right hand side, those of you on the middle decks at least will be able to see the narrow strip of land and then the large body of water beyond. And that's where we were. We're just coming up now to where we were moored last night. So yet another example of the twisting nature of this river. Oh, we've, gone. we've been moving for about 25 minutes now and just over this little strip of land you can see where we were moored last night. So 25 minutes to go couple hundred meters. The Emilu has basically an open door policy for the steering captain's room and we just went up there for the first time and he blew the whistle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's just so much louder than you think it's gonna be. I think I might be deaf now. It is unbelievably loud and all of the steam coming out. It's so cool. The actual wheel is like, it's huge. Oh, that was so much fun. Now what? Oh, we really haven't had a chance to get hungry since we've stepped on board the PS Emilu. I think it's been maybe an hour and a half since breakfast and it's time for morning tea. We have decided to share a slice of cake because I really don't think we could eat one each. I'm gonna struggle with this, but it's freshly baked apple cake. How can you say no? We have made it to Pericuda Station, which I believe we're having lunch somewhere and then going on a bus to a winery or there's a bus and a marshland walk. I don't think I was paying enough attention. <laughs> 
do you know what we're doing? It's a bus to a winery and then we're coming back here and walking through the marshlands. Very nice. You have to correct me if I'm wrong, but we learnt that the willows aren't actually native to Australia. They are imported from China and apparently when the Murray used to flood, what they did is they imp <laughs> they imported all of these willows and they lined the Murray with them. So even when it was flooded, you just had to be between two willows and you were good. When he told us that they imported Chinese weeping willows for <laughs> navigational purposes, it was a bit confusing. We had a few questions. <laughs> but apparently, yeah, the Murray used to flood or does flood when unattended to for like 50 kilometers. And boats used to be like, oh, I think this is the right way. And then get completely marooned when the, the water level started going down and started seeing like, fence posts and different gates popping up all around them and freaked out so that lets them know as long as you're between the willows you're on the river we've just gotten to rest down wineries and we're going on a wetlands walk apparently we're going to learn about the indigenous community and what this place used to be like millions, no, probably thousands of years ago. Apparently this tree, not only did they make boomerangs out of the bark, but the leaf has a toxin in it that they figured out if they put it into, the, if they crush it up and put it into the water, fish die, float to the top, just go pick them up. So much easier than fishing. How smart is that? We're learning so much. It's only a 45 minute walk, but like everywhere there's a shrub or a tree, he's stopping and telling us all about the uses and its history. It's very cool. I think I've learnt more about the First Nations and Indigenous communities on this 45 minute walk than we did in school, yeah, which is so. ridiculous. Way more. It's such a fascinating culture. Time for lunch and maybe a glass of wine. So pretty. Well that was fun, we got wine and cheese in a bunker made on their land. They basically built it out and recovered it so it kind of looks like a hobbit hole. And the wine is delicious, another great lunch. Considering this was our first excursion and I had zero expectations, I have had such a great afternoon. Just 35 minutes and we'll be back at the boat. We made it back to the boat. Did we? This doesn't look like the boat. We've made it back to Paracuta Station for a happy hour and I think food's coming soon. We're ending the first day full of excursions by having happy hour up on the deck with a view of the beautiful PS Emilu. It's a pretty great day. I had a lot of fun at the winery. Can't wait to show you around the boat because there's a couple cool places on board. It's dinner time. Oh my goodness. That is the end of the first two days on the Emilu on the River Murray. We just had dinner. I had an amazing steak. You had a steak as well. Finished with a huge bowl of tiramisu that I couldn't even finish. The food on board is on another level. It's been incredible. Like, it doesn't make sense how incredible it is because it's one chef in a tiny galley. Doing and everything. that good. Mm. Oh. But. The trip is not over. Tomorrow we are cruising down the Murray for like six or seven hours. That's going to give us plenty of time to do a full ship tour. There's a cool... Kthik thik End of video. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from the back deck of the P.S. Emilu. And if you can hear them, excuse the birds because we've woken up inside a flock of glass. Now that we've been on the P.S. Emilu for two days, we know it pretty well, so it's time for a tour. Right as you come on, we have one of the most impressive spaces in the entire ship. It is the open engine and I believe at 11 o'clock today we actually get like a tour of this from the engineer. On either side you have the wheelhouses, I think they're called, that house the massive paddle steamer wheels. Is the wheelhouse where you steer? What are they called then? Moving to the front of the boat, 
The PS Emilu is a key sort of system. So every time we leave the boat, you take your little key card with you to represent that you have exited. That way when they depart, they know that everyone's on board at a glance. This is the bow of the boat, perfect for a Titanic moment. I believe there is one passenger room down here, but the most important room of all is also on this level. This is the saloon where we get most of our meals and all of our drinks during the day. The food has been incredible and the service is amazing. Breakfast is served. The saloon actually opens out onto the back and we have been eating a lot of our meals out here. Even though it can get chilly in the morning, we've been enjoying having our coffees out here. Upstairs. As soon as you walk up the stairs on the starboard side, our room is right here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. There are eight rooms on board that fit 16 people. I think most of them are a configuration like ours or a twin, but there is one suite over this. I didn't know if it would be open, but from this level, you can also get to the wheelhouse. There is an open door policy on the PS Emilu, which means we can go in right now. Nice. This is where our captain Warren sits. He steers the boat and he does all the things and he touches stuff, microphone. He makes a lot of announcements and he's incredibly knowledgeable about the Murray and the ecosystems that they have here. He blew the whistle for us yesterday when we were outside and oh my gosh, even though you knew it was coming, it still sent vibrations all down your body. <gasps> it was like an adrenaline rush. There is also this seating area on the middle deck at the back of the boat. It's really nice here because people don't seem to come up here very much, but there is a speaker so you hear all of the announcements super clearly. And that wraps up a tour of the PS Emilu. We have loved our time on board already and I'm so happy we still have another two days. Today is what we're calling a sea day because there is six hours of sailing today. But first, breakfast. Every morning we're given one of these sheets to fill out for what we want for breakfast. The portion sizes are Gynamonosaurus. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't actually tried everything yet, so this morning I think we're gonna get a few things. <laughs> this is Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast is served as like a a la carte kind of thing, so you just note down what you want and that's all that gets cooked, as well as like a continental section behind me. My plate looks a little bit sad because it was one hash brown and then I've stolen a bit of Jordan's bacon. It does mean though, if you're hungry you can get more, if you're not that hungry you can keep it to a minimum. It means yesterday no one really knew that that was happening and everyone ordered everything so the <laughs> plates were like overflowing. Now I'm a bit more conservative. We're also aware that lunch and dinner will probably be huge. Like the dessert size is there. And we're off. Six hours chugging upstream. We're about two hours into our chug up the river. That's what they call it, it's a chug. It's chugga chugga chugga. Okay. And we just got a tour of the engine room, which was super interesting. There is so much going into it for effectively like a turning wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it was so interesting because he explained how the steam turns into kinetic energy, and it was one of those things that Jethro clearly understands so well that he just talks about it and it flows so naturally and I was like, I don't even understand yeah. step one of this process. Lots of oil, lots of pistons, pretty cool. The day is honestly going so quick. It's almost midday, which means it's almost lunchtime. And it 
it just blows my mind that something so relaxing and so calm is going so quickly. I think my favourite part about the cruise is just sitting up here or standing up here and watching like the river life. Probably another hour or two and then it's lunchtime. I don't even think, I think it's like now. <laughs> We are living river life. The days are going fast and slow at the same time. The next thing we have to look forward to, other than cruising down the river, is a barbecue. It's been so nice today, just like sitting back and watching the world pass by you. There's so many people out on their caravans, seeing all the puppies. It's such a slow paced life out here. And I'm really enjoying it. The days are going so quickly though. Somehow it's already almost two. <laughs> ah, birds. We've just found our mooring for the night. More than that, such a nautical way of saying that we are where we're camping tonight. And we got the first glance of where we're having our barbecue and it looks beautiful. We just had no idea. We did get an itinerary at the start of the cruise that notes out everything that's gonna happen. We just didn't read it and haven't looked at it since. So everything has been a surprise. But I think it's been better because we've had zero expectations. I think so too. I know all we know today or tonight is barbecue, really nice setting, and live music. Crazy, but we only just found that out. <laughs> Don't act like we knew. It should be fun. <laughs> it looks beautiful. Up there. fire that it looks like they're cooking some of our dinner on. There's a huge plate again with all of these cute little plates. They're all mixed match and not one but two bars. I'm pretty sure only one will be by man but it is stunning up here. I can't wait till the sun goes down and all of these lights turn on and the fire is roaring. I hope there's marshmallows. Here's the craziest thing I've seen on the Emmy Lou so far. We've just docked up here for the night and for dinner and the bar has a little sign on the front of it that says the 2022 floodwaters reached this high. I'm hoping the camera's gonna do it justice to show you exactly how high we are. There is a huge bank to the left of me. It goes all the way down to the water level. The water's flooded all the way up to like my waist up here. I just, finding it hard to comprehend. It is nuts. It's so much further than you say. And apparently because it's flat out here, it went 10 Ks away as well. Like it's not just- That's crazy. Here. Yeah, it went 10 Ks. It floods wide, not just high. I feel like we've said a few times how Australian this trip is, but this plate just sums it up. <laughs> <laughs> Been around the world a couple of times or maybe more I've seen the sights, I've had delights on every foreign shore Good night guys, when the doctor asks me the place that I adore I tell them right the way You'll be at home amongst the gum trees With lots of gum trees A sheep, a tool, a kangaroo Nose line out the back and veranda out the front and an old rocking chair.
Good morning from a very sad day. This morning is the beginning of our last day on board the Amy Lou, but it's jam packed. As soon as we finish breakfast this morning, we're jumping on a bus that's taking us to Echuca Town and actually experiencing a different paddle steamer, the PS Canberra. I think it's quite a bit older and we're doing a full walking tour of the town there. It's gonna be a good last day. And he was a former convict as well who was sent out for 12 years for receiving a stolen ream of silk. After an hour bus journey all through Echuca and Moama where we learned so much about the history here, we are now boarding the PS Camber for an hour cruise down the Murray. I love it. So many exciting things happening. Really packed in this morning. It's so much fun learning all of the history and like how nutso it was and like Wild West, no rules. I love it. Part of our Amy Lou cruise also includes a cruise on the PS Canberra, which is much older, like I said before, it's about 100 years old. We're cruising down the Murray and just being like inundated with facts about all the other paddle steamers we're seeing and the erosion of the bank and like town history, it's really cool. It's so interesting to see and hear all of the history about the flooding in the past and the one in 2022 is one of the worst floods that they've ever had. And to see the markers everywhere on the bridges and on houses of how high the water got, it's just mind boggling. Like it literally does not compute for me how high that must have been and how much damage it would have been. It's just wild. Yeah, even before we got on the boat, there was markers just Insane. I think it's the third worst flood in reported history. This paddle steamer is technically a wood fire paddle steamer, but it's not one you can stay on overnight. So the Emmy Lou is still the last one in the world that you can stay on overnight. We still claim that. <laughs> Chuka, Australia would not exist. And I'm aware that is a hell of a statement to open the proceedings with. I've, I've set myself up for a big one, but it does happen to be true. One thing I keep thinking is every single person that touches point with us is just so knowledgeable and passionate about life on the river and what that entails and the history and the culture and all of that fun stuff. It's so much fun learning all about this Australian history. why that little boat you guys have been spending the last few days on was such an enormous part of our history. Because the towns across Australia could never have been founded without it. Victoria, New South Wales. Victoria, New South Wales. Victoria, New South Wales. I said to you 54 minutes ago, without a Tuka, Australia wouldn't exist. And now you know exactly what I meant. Do not underestimate the role that one little town can play because it changed everything. I am just feeling so, so grateful for the lives we lead and the decision we made two and a half years ago to quit our jobs because we've just realized or learned that the Murray River is the third longest navigable river in the entire world. Number one, is the Nile, which we've had the pleasure to be on. Number two is the Amazon, which we got to last year. And number three is the Murray. And we've just had the best time, and I can't believe we've checked off all three. It's a goal I didn't even know I had until we've checked it off. I love you. I love you, you're really pretty. If you do come here, try and get Joel as your tour guide. Oh my I've goodness. never seen someone so passionate about it, and it really like pulls you in to the time frame. Like, I felt like I was back 100 years ago. <laughs> Every single person we've met, their ability to 
describe something through an analogy or a story and take you to that moment and just you see it in your mind mm. it's just astonishing i don't know how they do it also the, the setting helps oh yeah a lot <laughs> it's like an old westy town <laughs> another fact so technically speaking the Murray if you look at it on a map doesn't look that long like the Darling River looks like it should be way longer the trick is if you unspooled the Murray because of all of the twists and turns that we've been spending three days already going through if you unspooled all of that it's huge three times as long it's like that goes three times as long oh so like on a map the Murray River is three actually three times bigger than it looks yeah wow yeah. To the Emilu, just in time for lunch. So, I don't know if we've actually told the camera yet, but this weekend they're doing heaps of speed racing on the river, which is effectively people being pulled on skis really, really quickly behind insanely fast boats. So every time you hear it, that's what that is. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty crazy event. <clears throat> and just like that, we're off. I believe this trip on the Murray is going to be like five hours, so we get some more of the country life. And this is definitely the hottest day we've had on board so far. Came out here before without shoes on and like burnt my feet. It's very beautiful. You can feel like the energy is rising on the riverbanks. There's more and more people coming and setting up camp for the weekend. It's definitely something I'd like to experience one day. Come down here for the river races and just set up somewhere and watch them go past. It can be pretty entertaining, quite dangerous. Days have gone so quickly yet again. Just a few hours ago, this is where we were having a tour of all of the wharf in Achuca and learning all about the history with Bluey. And now it's almost five and I'm exhausted. I feel like I've been here before. Just finished our last dinner on the Emilu. Might have been the best one yet. That creme brulee was honestly the best one I've ever had. It's so good. I actually didn't get too many shots of it, so we won't talk about it too much, <laughs> but it's been amazing. Every bit of food we've had on this whole trip has been honestly five star, but not just like restaurant quality. It's like home cooking mm -hmm. five star. It's better than restaurant quality. Yeah. It's like home cooked with love and the portion mm. sizes are ridiculous. lessons or morals to these videos that we make but I think there is one thing that the PS Emilu has taught me and that is that we should all get out and explore our own backyard not only do you get to support local Australian businesses but you get views like this I just feel like we are so trained to not look at the beauty of Australia like when you think of wanting a holiday you always think you want to go international because that sounds more grand and more fun but if this is what we have to offer what are we doing? It has also taught me that just because you are not the key demographic for an adventure or for an experience doesn't mean you aren't going to enjoy it or you shouldn't do it because I have had the best time on this trip and we are definitely not the key demographic. So if you were to take something away from this, go explore Australia. I feel like an ambassador for Australia. Maybe they should hire us. <laughs> but I don't want to say that you've been That's our last night, last night complete. Only thing left is go to bed, wake up tomorrow and get the train. It's been a hell of a trip. Love you. I'm so grateful. I can't believe this is the third longest navigable river and we've been on all three. That's crazy. All three. If you've made it this far, you clearly don't hate what we do. So please give this video a like and subscribe if you want to. It really helps a small channel like ours grow. Woo! I've had too many wines. <laughs> What, two? Three. Wow. Because I guess the tasting counts as one. And then I had two extras. Tuesday, do, do, happy days. Why is that? Is that downstairs? No.